17 years and 3,500 rooftops in four countries. 26 covers of every major automotive sales magazine. 14-time NADA convention speaker. 12-time winner of the Dealer's Choice Award. Generated over $1.4 billion of additional revenue for clients. Creator of the millionaire car salesman community. Number one Facebook group in the auto industry. Number one podcast in the automotive sales industry. Best-selling author of Googleopoly. NSA, CSP, and member of the Elite Million Dollar Speakers Group. Host of the Against All Odds broadcast radio show. Star of Vice TV's hit show, I Was a Teenage Felon. Sean V. Bradley. My name is Peter Meyerhoff. People call me Chappie because I always held a chapstick in my hand when I fought. From the first time I did meth, it was just lights out. I just didn't get off it after that weekend. The cops take my backpack, which had a gun in it, an ounce of meth and an ounce of weed. So that was my first time actually going to jail, jail, and I was arrested on four felonies right at 18. We stole $330,000 of jewelry. I remember it like it was yesterday, and he said this calls for an aggravated sentence of 12 years. And instantly I'd lost it. I finally got out of prison. I finally realized that if I wanted to live and not be in prison, I had to be sober. Once he got sober, I told my buddy who was running this car dealership, you gotta get my brother a job there. No joke, I filled out the application there. I was in prison so long, it said on the application, have you been convicted of a felony in the last 10 years? And I was like, I don't even have to admit to that. It was 12 years ago. I did some dumb shit as a kid and I just want someone to take a chance on me. I went from never having a job in my life to being a finance manager at a huge car dealership in Scottsdale. I have my own office in 13 months. 
I was still on parole and I was pulling up in a brand new Raptor. And now, an exclusive behind-the-scenes look at the filming of I Was a Teenaged Felon. So this is lunch break on set. This is SVB, Sean V. Bradley, and this is on The Vice. Um, you know, I was a teenage felon. We're halfway done with the uh, shooting. So check this out. set here. Let's go to wifey real quick. Let's ask her. So what do you think? How did, how did I do so far? Amazing. Yeah? Is it crazy hearing that story? Like, you know? <laughs> it is. And it's interesting to listen to your story with other people because you can tell where people like laugh at certain things which is kind of like the reaction. You know who I'm looking forward to? I can't wait to hear Billy though. Yes. Yeah, yes, Billy is going to be. Because Billy's sitting next to me, so I'm getting like the side commentary <laughs> yeah. from Billy. Um, and it's just really cool. So yeah, I can't wait. Yeah, and everybody, everybody on set has been phenomenal. Absolutely. Like the producers, the, you know, just everybody on here has been amazing. Yes. So this is crazy. So we're going to have a lunch. Let's go look at the, this is the famous carpet, ready? Yeah. That's that carpet. That's that carpet. That's the chair. Yeah. It's craziness. If you bought LSD in the late 80s or early 90s on the East Coast, you probably got it from me. When I started dealing drugs, I, I became like a rock star. It was at a 7-Eleven, and as soon as we get there, this dude that I don't even know, he's trying to hand me money. I'm like, no, nah, we're going someplace else. And as soon as I say that, you know, like the SWAT team, they jump out from the back and they come and rush us. Turns out this dude that we were coming to do the deal with was an undercover agent. They were like, you're about to be indicted on 710 to life counts. My plan was to establish a different identity and basically get the f out of Virginia. I'm gonna stage my suicide. I took some boots, a pair of pants and a shirt and I, I threw it in the water. I made it seem like I was sitting there and then I jumped in the water. That was the scene. When I was in LA, I was going down to the newsstands every day. So that's when I saw it one day. Fairfax LSD kingpin, fake suicide. Prosecutors say it's a hoax. When I first got caught, they put me in the holding pen and all the marshals, like they're coming by to look at me. And they're like, hey man, can you sign your wanted poster? You know, they, they're like, oh yeah, you're top 15. I'm like, I'm top 15? I'm like, why the f would I be top 15 US marshals this? I got sentenced in December of 1993 and then they shipped me off to federal prison. When I got in, I started out writing for prison newsletters. You know, that's how I started writing for Vice. I started writing for Don Diva magazine. So with Diane's help, we formed Guerrilla Convict. That was my publishing house. Seth served 21 years. He credits a woman who later became his wife as the reason he's made a successful transition from prison life. Our next guest is a former fugitive who spent two years on the run and is writer and producer of White Boy on Netflix, Seth Ferranti. I was like, who was this white kid? you know, that was supposedly running all these black gangs and, and running the city of Detroit. I found out that the reality was much different than the legend. I mean, you turned your life around. How, how were you able to do that? It's impressive. Let's go. My lipstick, low rise, high heels. Ooh, say my fur coat, my lace, all my leather. Damn, girl, come on. Fendi bag, Louis purse, yeah. Prada shoes, uh -huh. Gucci suit. Yeah. Fendi bag, Louis purse, yeah. Prada shoes, uh -huh. Gucci suit. Baby, cash in the bag, my love don't come cheap. I know I'm major rocker, and if he's rocking with me, cause I'm a sucker for shiny things. Shoes, Gucci suit. My heels are on six inches. I 
store shut down And I'm the reason why the store stay open I'm an addict for a Gucci bag And a fiend for the newest Birkin I swim in Chanel I sleep with La Perla My lips on Dior They all love I'm a designer whore Ooh, ripping that runway Like a dance floor diva Got my body so tight Jumping in the club Enjoying myself tonight Ooh, rip, rip, ripping that runway Baby dance like a dance floor diva Ooh, Fresh out season one of I Was a Teenage Felon. Shout out to Sean V. Bradley for season two finale. Hey man, much success to you. I apologize for not being able to make it, but um, I know you're gonna do your thing and you're gonna shine, man. So stay grinding, stay hustling. Hey, I'll catch you at the next one. Big Herc 916. time recording an episode of the Against All Eyes radio show. And man, I'm telling you, it was phenomenal. We were in the headquarters of iHeart and Z100. Man, I'm telling you, it, it's, it don't get no better than that. You actually just landed a TV show. Am I right about that? Yeah, major TV network signed me to season two of a hit show, and I'm actually the star of the show. What's crazy about this whole thing is that I'm from Queens in Brooklyn. I worked in New York City in the top nightclubs in the world, and for me to be able to be here right now is just pretty crazy. I pull up, drop head, make them 
haters drop dead. Bubble the mind clear, swagger beyond lair. Wispy on Times Square, light up like five layers. Shorty looking for love, ho not around here. Nah, too cool for the mother guys. Let you read in the black, favor her mother side. If she screaming, she want it, show her my other side. If it's murder, she real, I make a homicide. What's up, everybody? My name is Caesar, producer and director of Augustus Films, coming to you from Los Angeles, California. A big shout out to my boy Sean Bradley. So sorry I couldn't be there, brother. Out here working, you know, grinding as usual. Uh, you taught me how to do a lot of great things, and one of them was hustle. I uh, just wanted to congratulate you, a big congratulations, on sharing your story on Vice TV's platform. Incredible. I am so proud of you. Uh, so, so happy that our paths have crossed. And I'm just, you know, super excited that you get to share this with the world. And I'm so excited to see what is to come from all this. Thank you. Wishing I was there walking the red carpet and celebrating with you tonight. Uh, just super proud to know you. And thank you for always inspiring me and inspiring others around you, brother. Much love. And uh, we'll connect soon. Hi, Daddy, I'd like you to meet Eddie Leco. Eddie, how are you? Hi, Dr. Jackson. I said, Eight man. Seaweed, will integration ever come? Oh, Penny, my, my little white lily, we're outcast from both societies. Black, white, our love is taboo.
I know, but with this new TV show coming out. So what happened was, is that I didn't reach out to Vice. Out of nowhere, Vice TV uh, last January came and approached me and they said, look, we want you to be on season two. And here's the thing is I've never told my story officially. So I'm the star of the episode and they had two other people. They flew my mother in and they flew my friend Billy, who was part of that whole craziness back in the day. So it was three of us on the show. I'm really excited about it. I was shocked when they said that the episode is like, over 700 grand for one episode to worth all the production and all the all that shit goes into it so hi this is craig kelly i'm a producer for i was a teenage felon i've worked on seasons one and two and i just want to give a quick shout out to sean and everyone there in philly for the premiere of the king of clubs episode it was a thrill to work on i worked on a lot of different episodes including the the one with uh, peter meyerhoff chappy i know he's in attendance really a thrill to work on this episode I want to give a special thank you to Billy V and Sean's mother for doing interviews, as well as Sean for telling his life story. The unique thing about this show is how people turn their lives around and use many of the same skills they use to commit crimes to turn it around and become successful, hugely successful people, none more so than Sean V. Bradley. Uh, I think you're really going to like this episode. I know that uh, there are many more stories to be told, uh, footage that was left on the cutting room floor, but what we put in the episode is pretty epic. And I think you're going to like it. I hope you do. It's just a, a pleasure to work on this episode. I was the plug. Every five weeks, we were bringing in about 10,000 pills. Like anything else, there's rules. I wasn't allowed to sell drugs on somebody else's turf, but I figured, you know what I mean, I'm, I'm going to do me. I was in a fantasy world. Boom! And they have a freaking machine gun to my head. I thought I was dead. Oh, I was relieved that it was the police. I was a teenage felon. 